Welcome to another edition of Inside Medicine. I'm your host, Doug Geinzer, and we're here in the studio today with Mike Lute, the Executive Vice President of Pinnacle Brokers and our partner in the Medical Malpractice Savings Program. For those of you new to the Inside Medicine show, we broadcast live right here in the studio every single Friday at 10 o'clock in the morning, and you can catch us live online at vegasvideonetwork.com slash live. If you missed the show, you're able to catch us on YouTube, iTunes, pretty much everything that's out there. Uh, every week, we try to bring together the movers and shakers of medicine right here in Las Vegas, those doing innovative things, those that are bringing in new inventions, those that are attracting patients from all around the world to travel to Las Vegas, those in the world of medical education, and today, those that are helping out our practices and saving a great deal of money so they could operate their practices uh, in a more stream, stream, streamlined way. Mike, welcome to the studio and uh, glad to have you here. Thanks for having me, Doug. How were the holidays, man? Not too bad. Yeah, Back it's... and forth between uh, California and here, but it was yeah. a nice time. That's good. So t- before we get started, tell us a little bit about Pinnacle Brokers. Pinnacle Brokers, uh, the parent company is in Walnut Creek, California. Mm-hmm. We have, uh, we're a commercial insurance brokerage full services. We, uh, our emphasis is on customer service that, that we, we really do above and beyond for our clients, what a normal brokers would do to kind of remove any of the frustration or stress, uh, of maintaining your policies. Yeah. So, so you yourself, right. You're a Vegas guy, right? Absolutely. Been here six years. Right. On. And yeah. so Pinnacle Brokers, it's a California firm right. with a Vegas presence. Exactly. As we've discussed before, that is the big the big pond, yeah, yeah. California. So um, they have a very well-developed malpractice market yeah. and insurance market. And for as a comparison, there's approximately 6,500 doctors in Nevada yeah. total. There's about 54,000 in California. I heard about 118,000 once. So well, but that, what I'm speaking of is is the ones that are insurable, that aren't working it. with a facility or a, or a university. Got it. So there's 118,000 right. docs, but there's those that are employed or employed directly by a big exactly. facility. So Got 55,000 about that are yeah. on the market. Now, you've been in the world of medical malpractice and covering the docs and taking care of the docs for how many years 20. now? 20. 20 years? Yeah. 21. How'd you get started, man? I actually started out, I, I was uh, one of the founders mm-hmm. of uh, my first firm with two friends of mine. That, and uh, we were really focusing on stop loss reinsurance mm-hmm. and HMO reinsurance for managed care capitated contracts yep. back in the 90s when, when that was... Uh, that was big back right, then. Right, it was. Yeah. Then there was, a, there was a contraction in the late 90s. From that, we it, the, the osmosis of having large facility clients rolled into the malpractice opportunity. Got it. So we developed from that point forward, uh, and, and actually the name of the company had changed to um, adopt a, a better with, with the malpractice market. Yep. So how long have you been with Pinnacle then? I've been with Pinnacle about five and a half years. Okay, so really when you came out to Vegas, you came out yep. to expand their their horizons and bring them into Las Vegas. Exactly, But yeah. So you, you live here in Vegas, you hang out on the strip, you... Uh, do things that all of us locals do then. Absolutely. I'm as local as they come. There you go, I'd man. I say that when, it, you know, <laughs> where, where 80% of my clients, I have clients in about six different states, yep. but about 80% of them are in California. But it never, it never goes by when I'm in California, coming home is Vegas. There you go. So what brought you to Vegas? Like what made you excited about moving here? Well, living in California, not to be political or <laughs> ideological, but you know, I'm, I'm a, conservative person yep. and uh, watching the idiocy of Sacramento was very frustrating. And uh, beyond that, I just was looking to broaden my horizons. I have yep. a very well-developed team in California. Yep. We have three offices there. Yep. So I thought this was a good opportunity to, to broaden it. Cause I have clients all the way into Florida. So, and you know, the tax benefits are of course, amazing. Of course. And, and all you work with are physicians practices and those in the healthcare space. And also, um, Parallel with that, I, I've always had a few clients in Nevada, mm-hmm. but I learned early on that is a, it's a very Nevada-centric state. Yeah, it is. They really want to deal with people in their in their neighborhood. Yeah. So it, 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 for for the multiple reasons, it, it just was a good decision. So Vegas is a little bit different. What's if you were to identify mm-hmm. like the biggest difference between Vegas and California, or Nevada and California in terms of med mal insurance? What what is that? Well. I don't know if it's an offshoot of the crisis that you had in the late 90s, but yeah. 
in, in general, uh, malpractice rates in Nevada are about 35% higher than California. That's crazy. Yeah. And also, but then again, where in California, it doesn't matter how, how connected you are. It is gigantic. Yeah. So, and, and I bring that up is because that's the contrast with Nevada. With Nevada, it really is everyone knows everyone, especially in the medical community. Sure. And that helps that the, the familiarity, uh, the trust, just working with people that you see all the time yeah. uh, between restaurants or, or at your place of employment. Yeah. It just, uh, it, that is the, the most noticeable difference that I found. Yeah. So it's, I've been in Las Vegas for about 24 years now. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't really get deeply into the healthcare space till the late nineties, got involved with Las Vegas heels in the early two thousands. And just as I was getting involved, we had uh, the Keep what we called back then code word coding, keep our doctors in Nevada. And it was uh, the runaway med mal rates were going crazy. Right. It's some of our OBGYNs, their, uh, their rates quadrupled and five-folded, and uh, it was nuts. And Kenny Gwynn, our governor at the time, had a call special session. We were able to get a medical malpractice cap in place. Mm -hmm. uh, so a tort reform cap at 350000 And when that happened, everybody was waiting for the premiums to come back down. Mm -hmm. I don't think they ever did. Well... That actually flows like an economy. Mm -hmm. There's what's called the hard market and a soft market. Yeah. And be, due to the economy over the last, say, 10 years, this has been the longest soft market there's ever been. And, but what happens is, see, normally with a hard market, you basically have all the markets, all of all the markets, the rates are the, is at their high. Yeah. And, uh, that just works when, when, when the economy is fine. But as things really contracted, um, the, the rates get lower and lower and lower and lower. And then you, you reach a bottom where it, it, it can't go any lower because of the Department of Insurance. Yep. Rate, rates are all regulated through that. But at the same time, they had a, we had a phenomenal economy where, or a phenomenon in the economy where doctors still couldn't pay their premiums. Yeah. And so that's what's really kept it at a level right now so that created what you were talking about where they still couldn't you know pay their so yeah, that kind of gets to the crust of why mm -hmm. we're here today. We want to talk right. about the medical, medical malpractice savings program. Mm -hmm. So just for the audience that's out there, uh, to give you a little bit of highlight behind it. So Las Vegas Heals, uh, organization, largest healthcare organization in the state of Nevada. Uh, we serve group employers that employ probably about 32, 34,000 healthcare professionals out there, constantly listening to our, our, our members. Uh, and at the same time, we want to be able to serve a larger population. A lot of those are the smaller practices. And uh, we went out and we started talking to them going, where are your pain points? What's causing you issues? And obviously, uh, <clears throat> reimbursement issues are huge with all of our practices. Our docs uh, just are not getting reimbursed enough or paid enough. I hate that word reimbursement, but paid enough. Uh, so we started looking at that. And we went, well, we're going to uh, we're gonna attack that. And we're doing that in this next upcoming session. Uh, but in the meantime, what can we do to cause some relief? How can we ease their pain today. So as we started peeling apart some of their profit and loss statements, uh, we looked at the expense side. And typically the second largest line item in their expenses is medical malpractice insurance. Mm -hmm. And we went, how do we <clears throat> reduce that? Can we bring that down? And I think that's what brought you and I together was, mm -hmm. hey, look, here's this group from California. They've got a substantial presence there. They've got relationships with all of these large, uh, the, 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 the upper insurance companies. And uh, can we leverage that buying power? So tell us a little bit about, you've been able to save some of our members, on average, 30, 35%. We saw one come in before the holidays. It was almost 50%. Correct. How are you able to do that? Like, what, what gave you the ability to walk into a practice and save them that kind of money? I, I just, I learned early on. Oh, sorry. I learned early on that what you're saying is exactly true. It, it, it it's, it's a substantial drain on the operating costs when you're paying 50 to a hundred thousand dollars for your malpractice insurance. And, and once again, you're, you're getting delayed reimbursements, lower reimbursements through Medicare. And, and it, it is a problem. So that was something that I identified where I could go into someone. See, doctors are very, they, they don't cha make change very often. Yep. And so in order to get their attention, it was something that you, you, you could realize that if you could save them money on the malpractice, it, it, 
opens up a lot of doors for other things. Yeah. Hiring new staff, whatever it is, but the operating costs. So because of my book of business in California and Pinnacles, we have re- strong relationships, direct relationships with all of the in-state carriers, and we work with the best wholesalers in the country. Uh, I don't waste anybody's time. So when I bring something to an underwriter, they're going to do what they can for me. Yeah. Because of the size of my book with particular carriers, where an average broker would have to, let's say you, you, you identify someone that's willing to take a look at a quote, that broker would need to give them an app, then, then they get the application back, some, some other uh, accompanying information, send it to the carrier, the carrier messes around with it, and within about a week or so, you get an indication. You'll receive an indication. With me, I say, this is my guy, this is who he is, or, or his specialty and his retro, give me an indication, and I have it in 30 minutes. That's huge. I'm able to do that, and, and because of that, it created more success. Mm-hmm. The more you can streamline your process, the more successful you become, the more you can help the physicians. Yeah. My sole goal, my straight line is always helping the physicians. I've said that at every firm I've worked at, if because they've all hired me, uh, they've recruited me in, I haven't had to go look, but I, I, I make that rule. I'm going to lower the premiums of your existing doctors and this is the way I do things. My sole concern is the doctor first, the firm second. Yep. And that's the way it works. So this program, it's not exclusive to one <clears throat> insurance company. This is no. put out to multiple lines and you're able to find the best bid. And that's actually something that developed from previous programs that I've done of the, in this nature. Uh, we, we did have, I actually have one that's active in Palm Springs right now, mm-hmm. Riverside County, where we brought in the three best markets and let them bid, you know, which, which would be the most competitive and went with the one that, that, that was more favorable. That turned out to be a little confining because they had underwriting requirements. So mm-hmm. if you have doctors with unique practice profiles, elevated age, a couple of claims here and there, while they're in this program, they couldn't be approved by the program. Yeah. So we've evolved it to where I now, I don't let them bid. I let the best markets to participate so that we can meet the need of every situation. So this isn't your first time to the rodeo developing one of these oh, programs. No, we've You've done, done this before. Four or five. We have at yeah. least 700 doctors in yep. different states that are in programs like this. That's cool. Well, we were hoping to top all of that here in there Las Vegas. Go. So that's, uh, that, that is our goal. So, Absolutely. you know, we, we, we set out as we heard the pain points from our doctors go, well, we're just not getting reimbursed <laughs> enough. Um, we said, well, we're going to work on that. We're going to push on Medicaid reimbursements for that to go up. And we think that uh, by driving up Medicaid reimbursements, uh, that will push the commercial insurance rates up as well. Mm-hmm. So that'll be good. But in the meantime, we started looking at that expense column and we this med mal insurance just jumped right off the page. And, you know, those of us that uh, are in business and we manage by the P&L all day long know that by saving a dollar on the expense side, what that means from an operation standpoint, because, you know, I was meeting with a practice yesterday and he operates on a 6% margin. Mm -hmm. I went, oh my God. So if you wanted to recognize the same type of savings that we could bring to you on MedMal, okay? If you wanted to do that, you would literally need to bring in almost 15 times the number of patients just to recognize that same dollar in your pocket because when you're operating on on six percent margins that's a that's a huge amount and delayed reimbursements yeah so yeah. he looked at it, he goes look doug i don't care any way you look at it you save me 30 percent on my med mal <clears throat> that money goes into my pocket and frankly where it goes it goes into my expansion exactly. it goes into my ability to grow my practice which is why i'm here to serve more patients and frankly fulfill your mission of improving the quality of health in southern nevada right so you're helping me grow. So we're we're grateful for the the partnership that we're building with Pinnacle. Uh, seems like a wonderful, wonderful thing. Tell us a little bit more about the program. Talk to us about you know how does a, a doctor ask for an indication? We've got some some membership uh, development reps out on the street who are talking to these practices. But talk to us a little bit about the process. I developed this program and and all of these programs that I that I do. I'm I. I I get an assurance from the markets that they're going to give us immediate indications with almost no information. Basically what I'm able to do is 
they have the price structure for this program and, and they can do maximum credits mm-hmm. and then above and beyond discounts because of the affiliation of the membership. Yeah. So they already have the numbers. So because of that, and they know that they're dedicated to this program, all I need is the name and the specialty. I forward that to them. They have records themselves of all of these physicians. Of course. And so they will immediately send us back an indication with maximum credits allowed. You know, of course, underwriting must be done. If there are small changes due to a claim or, or, or some something else, that will be factored into it. But you're still going to be receiving the maximum discount. And, and the way they're able to do this is, like I said, buying power. Yep. One doctor, you, you get your price. But even if you have a loose affiliation like this, a membership program like this, they know they're going to see every one of them that comes in. So they're extremely generous and they take a chance on it. So they give us maximum discounts. And then they'll even factor in allowable discounts, claims free, uh, risk management on top of the Vegas Seals discount. So it very quickly gets to the 30% range. Yep. See, this is why we've kept it vague in the sense that you, you never know. Every situation is a little bit different, but for what we've seen at, at this point, like you said, 30 to 50%. It's just a wonderful thing for the doctors. Yeah, I want to put a little context. So it was um, <clears throat> amazing. Right before the holidays, we had a new member that joined, and they joined for this program. They had not been a member of Heels before. Uh, they wanted access to this discount. They couldn't get to uh, the discount program until they became a member of Las Vegas Hills. Uh, we got the indication, and initially the indication was a little bit off. Uh, when we got to the actual application, we saved this practitioner almost 50%. True. And without disclosing the practice or who they are, or their specialty, uh, that amounted to about a $9,000 saving. So here's this doctor saying, hey, I'm going to join Las Vegas Hills. I'm going to pay $1,000 because they're a mid-sized practice or a good-sized group, uh, but I'm immediately going to recognize a $9,000 savings before I even take advantage of any of your other benefits. I'm eight grand ahead. It's She's actually with a better carrier, too. That's huge. The policy form is better. But, yeah, and, 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 and that is with an individual doctor of a lower yeah. severity specialty. Imagine the savings for an OB, orthopedic yeah. surgeon. And, as a matter of fact, I just sent over one for a group today. They'll they'll probably save thirty eight thirty nine thousand dollars. Wow! A per year per year. That's big. Yeah, it really is. It's a wonderful thing. Like I said, this is this is only to aid the physicians. Nothing yep. more. So, is there a sweet spot? And what I mean by that? So, we've written some policies for some individual doctors. Got some multi uh, physician practices coming in. How big is too big? How small is too small? What the, what does that look like in your world? Are you pretty much able to insure anybody? I could insure anybody. We, I, I, I make sure that I have my relationships will do whatever I need them to do for the benefit of our clients. And these and because of the Vegas Seals membership, they're, they're going to give the same discount to any member that no matter how small, no matter how large. Yeah. Let's get back to the process. So you develop an indication, you deliver to the practice. Practice goes, hey, this looks awesome. Um, how do we advance that? What's the next stage? This is what I was saying earlier about service. Yeah. We do almost everything for them. Basically, what? So we'll, the, one of the girls will deliver an indication. If If they express interest, they'll email me. I will... Um, have someone send them a partially completed application with the redundant information. They look it over. They complete it with the, with, with the, uh, the, the other items needed. It's maybe four or five questions mm-hmm. uh, you know, per application that you would need to add, just some personal information and their signature and, and verification. They send, All they do is send it back to us. We forward it to the carrier, we deal with the underwriters. If the underwriters have any complicated questions, we we, uh, simplify it and then resend directly to to the client Mm -hmm. a simple, you know, an easy to understand, please answer the below questions. They answer the questions, they email them back. We have the final indication, a, a formal offer. They say, sure, looks good, let's do it. 
They reply back that they're they're interested. We go back to the carrier. They send us all the all the pages that need to be signed to accept the offer. We forward it to them. It's done. That's nice. We could even aid them in in the uh, help them with the cancellation of the current policy. Let's let's pause on that. Mm -hmm. So we've had a lot of members that have been led to believe that they could only renew their insurance on this anniversary date. And they go, Doug, I just renewed my policy uh, last month. You're going to have to wait. Give me a call in December of next year. Is that true? Absolutely not. That is indoctrination by the standard markets because mm-hmm. they they want to instill this fear in you that you that you just have to honor the anniversary date. Malpractice insurance is a day-by-day policy. You can cancel it any time you like, with the exception of um, the non-standard markets, which would require the first 25% of the premium, which means one quarter. So from one quarter in, you can re- you can cancel it. And you'll ha- let's say you, you did pay it in full, 100% refund of unused premium from the day you cancel. So a doctor that just bound a couple weeks ago and they said, hey, you know what, for, for kicks, let me go ahead and get an indication from these guys. They get this thing and they go, wow, I could save 30, 40 grand. Right. All they have to do is call, execute on that. They get their savings and they get a refund from any premiums that they had already paid. Absolutely. And, you know, this is I actually call that a double win mm-hmm. or, or a double loss. So you've now discovered that you're paying 30 percent more than you should. So you're actually going to continue paying 30 percent more than you should to take an opportunity at the anniversary date where you could cancel the policy that that you're currently overpaying on, receive a refund, and immediately start saving 30%. It's huge. I don't see how you wouldn't make that decision. Yeah. So what are some of the other um, unknowns out there? So I've heard this thing about a mature policy, mature policy. What, the, what does that mean? Uh, well, malpractice is now claims made. There, there are rare situations with occurrence, but a, a claims made policy is a policy that matures over a five-year period. Mm-hmm. So the way they look at it is the f- the first day, the inception of a malpractice policy, the carrier only has a risk going forward. After the first year, now they have risk going forward and going backwards. Two years, backwards. Three years, backwards. Four years, Got backwards. It. So on the fifth year, it is now a mature policy. And what that allowed was, and this was something that kind of helped with the with the soft market, because the first year of a policy is always at least expensive. It's approximately 20, 23% of the mature rate at the end. Mm-hmm. So it allows them to get in there at a lower rate and then as their practice builds or whatever the situation is, it evolves over, over the maturing process. Um, that's really the way that works. Interesting. It's good stuff. What other terminology, what other things should our members be aware of? Well, two two things in particular. There's more brainwashing by the carriers. Tail policy and AM best. Mm-hmm. Now, AM best is the rating system that um, standard insurance carriers are rate, are mandated to be rated by. And and it's that's generally for the purpose of the E&O insurance of the hospitals. Mm-hmm. They require their employed physicians sometimes to be covered by an AM best rated carrier. So what's happened is that's become a legend that where everyone, Oh, is it AM best rated? Is it AM best rated? I've heard that before. Yeah. yeah. You know, but you know, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a financial stability rating, but it's not as crucial as they make it seem. Yep. You know, they, uh, tail policy is something that they'll always ask as well. Well, do I have tail with this? There are two types of tail. Tail Retirement tail is, is the one that people should be concerned with because all of the carriers that we use, once you have been with them a mature period of time, but for example, uh, there are some that are evolving like a medical protective. Actually, you only need to be with them one year now and you will have a fully vested retirement tail. Hmm. Retirement tail is once you've, you've stopped practicing medicine, I call it sleeping at night coverage. You're no longer seeing patients, but you still have the statute of limitations two to three years where you could be dragged into a lawsuit. So as you leave, they give you an assurance that any claims that come up, they will be covered. That is, to have that for free is huge because the average price for a tail policy, a retirement tail policy, 
is from 200 to 250% of the annual premium. Interesting. So you want to get into a situation where you can receive that for free. All the markets I use offer that. That's great. Other tail people refer to as you hear nose, tail. What that means is prior acts. And what, what a lot of people don't understand is, is that if, if you look at your certificate of insurance, it'll have a retroactive date. That is the start date of either your practice or of that policy. I have doctors that have a retroactive date of 1989. They've been practicing that long. Regardless of the amount of moves you make with a malpractice policy, all you do is retain that retroactive date. You, you could have someone in Vegas Hills who moves next month and they have a 1995 retroactive date. The new carrier picks up the 1995 retroactive date. So there is no need for tail. It's automatic. Interesting. Yeah. No nose, no tail. Now there are some, like with medical groups, an employment situation, it's a little bit different because they don't want to vest in someone that hasn't worked out yet. So what they'll do is they'll require someone to tail out so that they can pick them up on a first year rate, but usually in the employment contract, they to pay them back for that, they will give them tail when they leave. So, but it, you know, it's nuanced in that sense, but those are the, the, the big jargon words, I would think. That's awesome. This has been an amazing uh, session here. I, I think we uh, learned a lot about uh, medical malpractice insurance, the premiums, oh. what goes on. Uh, Las Vegas Heels values the partnership that we're building with Pinnacle Brokers. We look forward to providing these great discounts to our members and probably more importantly, our future members. So for those of you that are looking to take advantage of this program, uh, you could just go to the website and simply fill out a form. It is Las Vegas Heels dot org slash msp for malpractice savings program again uh there's no harm in asking for an indication that may be able to save your practice 30 percent uh it's a substantial number i think it goes straight into your pocket so that's a good thing um i appreciate everybody being here today mike thanks for coming into the studio for, me. Uh, for another edition of inside medicine we broadcast live right here in the studio every friday at 10 in the morning if somebody happens to miss the program you could always catch us uh, on youtube.com our itunes channel uh roku we're found pretty much everywhere this will be posted up on facebook and and all of our wonderful social media outlets that are out there. We look forward to seeing everybody back here next Friday, 10 o'clock. And Mike, once again, thanks for coming to the studio. Got it. Good to see you.